So our, our expectations in the bond market is uh, neutral digestion. You know, again, just looking at the three points, we've got our upside, you know, our upside pivot over under number is at the resistance point. We've got our support level. MC value is a positive one, so we're a slight positive, but our expectation is sideways. So here's the uh, action in the bond. So it, early in the morning, that you know, this this midpoint line is a, is kind of seductive because you'll see a lot of trading around that level. But it's it, it is rotational number, so it can be expensive. When it works, it just usually just works like this. But you know, here the market is a digestive trade. Um, you know, it didn't give you a lot of opportunity for a reaction off the resistance point. You know, these, you know, the, the markets don't, you know, you can't predict when the markets are going to give you money. You know, you can't come in and say, I want to, I'm going to try to make X amount of money a day. You, you, you need to be there, you know, you take money out of the market when the market gives it to you. And today, in, you know, the market traded within the, um, within its structure, um, but it was a difficult day to make money if you didn't try to capitalize on that opportunity of the direction. So here's a, you know, here's another good example. The euro currency had a huge negative signal yesterday, and here's here's this is where this is where uh, a discretionary trader can beat a machine, okay? Especially if you're we're using indicator analysis, because what the f indicator analysis again, it's looking backwards. It's telling you what was, okay? It's not telling you what is. It's not predictive. It's giving you the foundation. Um, you know, in this mark, you know, this market had a big negative signal. Well, the, what 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 our indicators do, and when you learn about these market color indicators, when I designed developed this system, it was in the late '90s, uh, around '96, and it's, I had all these equity day traders coming in and subscribing to my S&P work, and and they you know and they they wanted you know they, so they wanted me to start doing individual stocks and they give me a list of a hundred stocks to do and you know I'm a futures guy so I'm doing you know one mark you know we're like one market and we had 35 markets and we were like that was big I mean we had 30 we were doing 35 markets um, so there's no way I was going to handle a thousand markets and that's what drove me to put together the market color indicator analysis and, it, and that the goal was not to create a predictive indicator the goal was to create something that told me what is What's going on? Just tell me, you know, point me in the right direction. I want to know facts. I want to know markets that are neutral. I want to know markets that are an extreme. I want to be able to develop a strategy. And so that's what the, this indicator analysis does. It really gives you a definition of what is. And the MC value is a summary of those indicator systems. So each one of those colors represents a, um, a signal. And in this market, orange is a sell signal. So we had two systems generating sell signals. Um, but one thing, you know, and this is where it gets a little gooey, and you know, and and you can, how far you want to go down the rabbit hole with us, we go deep. And so in this, in here, here was a clue that today was maybe the signal wasn't going to follow through because our ADX indicator, which is a trending ability indicator, was brown, which is neutral. If it's purple, it's got the market's got more propensity to trend. If it's brown, it's it, it doesn't. So you have a sell signal that doesn't have the propensity to trend. And that's, and that's what you came in this morning. Um, so we've got bear trend acceleration. We know that the resistance point and this acceleration signal is going to stay, remain in force below 143.64. So what does that mean? That means if you sell the market, it can rally all the way up to 143.64 and still bad. So if you're selling the market here, that's a decent rally. So if you're selling the market below one, you know, if you sell a downside break at 141.03, uh, you know, it could have a rever buy reversal strategy that could kick in and rally a couple hundred points, and it's a rally to sell. So that, you know, when you're looking at these price map levels, it's giving you that overview, that market structure. And so that's what it did today in the um, in the Euro FX. And, that, and actually, you know, these are a couple things today. Um, you know, one, we had the brown ADX, and the other thing, if the market's that weak, it, you know, if, if markets are going to sell off, they just go. They're not, they don't let you in. 
and typically they're going to open up below the midpoint of the critical range and they're going to go and that's your trade. Typically most successful sells when the markets really roll over they're coming off the directional early in the early in the morning you know let's say if you're talking S&P you know like four to four or five o'clock in the morning you're getting a sell signal off the directional and then you come in the uh, you come in on the regular side opening and they're and they're chopping around the downside pivots squeeze you know head faking everybody out before they really roll over but the real sell signal is here so if you come into a negative sell signal day it should open up weak which is the midpoint of the critical range Another thing that you might want to do, that I do is put a moving average on. Not so much there's a magic moving average, but it's a good sense of railroad. You know, when the, you know, I like to get a clue of, you know, are we in for a railroad session? Like, you know, exactly today. You come in in a couple markets, and just a simple moving average told you don't fade this thing. It just said you wait for this structure to break before you do it. You know, and that just gives you just. Not that you know it needs to be that exact, but just to give you a sense, is this market really just holding structure? Did we have a break in structure? And if we didn't have a break in structure, it's something to consider, especially if it's been happening all over at the you know, right at the beginning of the session. You know, if you've had something that you, you look you come in and you've had something like this, it's something to be concerned about. Um, but the other thing that you know is that if you are gonna sell the market here, looking for this clear trend accelerator, that negative signal to follow through. That's not your leverage point. You know, so this is where the service can be a size management tool. You know, you, you've identified here's a, here's a price point, but what do you know? You know that the market can rally up to here because that's the over-under number. It might stop here. That might be it and they might roll over, but it can go up to there. So you need to be prepared on your size management of where you really want to you know, take your stand and spend your money. And you want to spend your money at the optimal inflection points. So the soybeans uh, were in a, a positive neutral transition. Um, so this is interesting because you've got a market neutral transition has the potential for a positive turn, but you have the over under number above the market. So you've got a conflict there. So basically, what this is is this is where the behavioral side mixes with the automated side. So the automated side is telling you here's the we've got a potential for a positive turn, but. Um, the analyst is coming and saying, I don't, you know, prove it to me. Prove it to me that you're going to turn positive. And so there's a, you know, putting the, um, having the over under number above the market in a positive state, um, you know, it's saying that, you know, to confirm that signal, it needs to come above this price point. These are also great trades because you know, a lot of times when you have a, a, a situation like this, this is, you can get some nice pops. Instead of being instead of being like a, a gradual working through it, you get that real nice bang, um, and th that can be a difference on how you enter a strategy. You know, so if you have a situation where you know one, the market's already tested it a couple times. You're not you're not buying. You know, if you let's say you're looking for a breakout signal today. Well, if if all of a sudden you're coming here and you've got a you you know you've got a you're a breakout strategy that's going to run here. You, you don't want to get stuck in that initial flush through the stops and get a bad fill versus, you know, so you don't want to use a hard stop. You want to let the market take it out and then buy a pullback. Versus if the market is building structure below here, now I can, you, you can have a little more confidence using a hard stop for a breakout strategy. But when you see a situation like this where you have kind of a, you know, prove it to me situation when the market's trading below price point and you have a positive signal, it's not positive, it's not confirmed until it gets above this price point. So here's that inflection point. So the market wasn't able to, didn't really do much today and what really took over this market is the neutral state. You know, so that's, you're looking for the market to perform the expectation and part of the expectation today, you know, is neutral transition. And so part of that state was neutral, and the, and the best opportunity today uh, was looking to buy breaks off the support level or buy the breakouts. But, it, you know, really it, kind of a difficult trading uh, day all around.
So on the gold market, this is a you know different state. We have a bull trend extreme. So that market's been you know going straight up and it's getting a little overdone. And so we have our expectations today are that we've got our top of our critical range, our upside pivot is here. This is our exhaustive expectation. And our R level, our over under number is actually below our support pivot below the market, but it's represented as this line, because this is where this bull trend would be broken. We'd, we'd stop making higher move lows. And so our expectation is if we get a move into this area, we could have an exhaustive move. And if it did exhaust, it can break all the way down to here, and it's still in a positive trend. 